Panorama? Yeah, I could.
We're going to have an opening prayer, and then Will and Jamie are going to come and sing, He Touched Me. And after that, uh, we have two friends, or many friends we could have selected to have be a part of this. And it was, uh, you know, we could stand up here all day long and talk about Dale and uh, what a great blessing to us he was. But uh, so we, we narrowed it down to two guys. And they're going to come and introduce themselves in just a minute. And in turn, they're going to share uh, a testimony about Dale's life. Okay? So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time together. God, we thank you, Lord, that the Bible teaches us how we can be sure that we will fly away with the rest one day. And I just thank you, God, and bless you and praise you for what you have um, done in this situation with Dale's life and his... Uh, Exodus into the heavens, God, we just bless you and praise you today that there is a heaven that we can go to when it's over. And I just pray today that your Holy Spirit would anoint every facet of this service. And God, we're here to do two things, Lord. We're here to honor you, lift up Jesus Christ, and we're here to remember day of God. And we just pray that you be with us as we do that. Bless his family, Father, and give them grace in this uh, time of need as they're left behind to grieve. I pray that you would watch over the grieving process in their lives. Thank you for your love for us. We love you. We declare that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father in this chapel. And uh, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, to do today what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Quite a character. 
to say the least. Uh, one night, he wasn't in class for whatever reason. When we got out of class, he was walking around here somewhere, and he had on an Alabama T-shirt and an Auburn cap. I said, what's the matter with you, man? He said, when you get home, look up James 1.8. Man, I was riding home the whole time thinking, the only time I know that the Lord said anything about Alabama football is when Moses said, roll tight. <laughs> so I don't know where you'd find it in James. So I get home, I couldn't wait, and I, I thumbed through the Bible and I looked at James 1.8, and it says, he is such a person that is double-minded in all he does in life. That was Dale. <laughs> I tell you what, I came to know Dale even more than when we had our class in here because he would stop by my store up in Sarah Land and he was running some errands and we would we would talk about everything. We would talk about Alabama football. We would talk about the mission. We would talk about his precious mother. And there never was a time over here when we were in class when at the end we gave um, time for prayer requests. And without fail, every time, Dale said, pray for my mother and my family without fail. When I saw that Dale had passed away and I called Pastor Jim, ever since that conversation, I have thought about the last time I saw Dale. I remember him coming in the store. I don't remember how we parted, but I sure hope I told him I love him because I did. He meant something to me. I loved it every time he came in my store. But here's what I know. Based on the word of Dale's testimony, what God works in, he and I will pass again, and I'll be sure to tell him I love him. Amen. I hope when you guys leave here today, you'll know for certain where you'll spend eternity, and that you'll get to see Dale again. Thank you for the opportunity, and God bless you. never had lost the word, but I am today. Uh, Mike Martin and myself went to see Dale in the hospital. <clears throat> Dale took my hand. It was just as hot as it could be. I've been around people that were that were fixing to go, and they didn't know where they were going. But Dale knew where he was going. That's right. <laughs> and uh, he said, I love you. And I said, I love you, Dale. He said, I'll see you. <coughs> so I called him the next day. I said, what you doing, Dr. Will? He said, I'm sitting up in bed watching Dr. Phil. <laughs> he loved Dr. Phil and he loved Dr. Judy. <laughs> or, or Judge Judy. So and I said, that's, that's good. I said, you're not on your cell phone? and no, I'm just watching TV. He said, I know I ain't got much time. But I know I'm going. I said, I know you do, Dale. I said, I'll be there, but probably not before you. So I was sitting in my office Wednesday morning. I got a telephone call from a friend of mine. She said, You okay? I said, Yeah, I'm fine. She said, well, you're not Dale. Well, I didn't, but she told me. I said, Tasha. I said, No, but I'm fine because I know where he is. Uh. And, uh, so Eric come in there. I told Eric, I'm okay, man. I'm okay. <clears throat> so uh, 
At night I woke up about one o'clock to go to the bathroom. Well, I went back to bed, the Holy Spirit put a scripture in my heart and on my lips. And Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, therefore, Dale was justified by his faith, and Dale had peace with God. Yeah. With the sake of Jesus Christ. So, you know, he told me, I settled, and he did. And I stand here today saying we should be dancing and jigging and having a good time. Because Dale, I know where he is. Hey, but Wednesday morning after I got that call, I called Brother Womack. That's pastor of Philadelphia. That the church and me and Dale have been going to church. And uh, I told Brother Womack, I said, Dale, beat us home. <laughs> Brother Womack just kind of chuckled. <laughs> he, said, he said he did, but he said, we're going to get there. I said, I know, but there's not a lot of time yet. So what I want to say to everybody is, you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the rest of this day. If you think you got all the time in the world, you don't. And you don't know where you're going to go. If you're going to be a choice. Are you going to stand before the Lord and worship Him? Or are you going to cry out in hell? And it's just going to be too late. You better get it right. Tell you what, I'll not miss Dale, because Dale ain't gone nowhere. He's here on this hill. He's in our heart. I'll see him every day. And hey, I'm thankful for the time that I had with Dave. And I'll tell you, thank you. Don't tell me. You better get it right. Because you ain't promised tomorrow. Thank you. Turn your head. You're a little bit. <laughs> well, first thing I'll say is Michael, not Dale, my brother is Michael to me. Um, somehow he got the jeans with the hair. <laughs> my brother Joe and I are, we don't have much hair. <laughs> and Stephen. Yeah, we're the hair club. Um, I want to thank the, everyone here for coming. Um, Can I turn the so, microphone on? It was so awesome to see you guys ride up on your motorcycle because it was just, oh, it just touched me right here. Oh, she can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh, hey, mother, can you hear me now? No. We'll play it for you later. Um, after he passed away, I, I noticed on Facebook there was some uh, messages of from his friends, and I, I know Mike had a lot of friends. I just didn't know all the people here. Um, Mike and I, he's my brother, but we were about mm, eight years apart in age. And uh, so our relationship was a lot different instead of just one or two years apart. Um, you know, a lot of our relationship was um, after I got married. So some of you guys were telling some funny stories. I remember when. I asked my wife to marry me, and um, he said, show me your ring. And she did, and he goes, oh, that's so bright. <laughs> or um, another time my daughter was telling us, um, she, she texted us this week, and she said, Daddy, was Uncle Mike Santa Claus? Because when our kids were little, <laughs> um, we know where Santa Claus is at. But... He wanted to add a little extra touch for the kids, and and so he would call up, and he would be Santa Claus to the kids, and and he, he would ask them what they wanted, and said, "Y'all be good little boys and girls, and I'll be there, you know, tomorrow or whatever day it was." Um, so yes, Michael was very funny. Um, he was also real quiet. My son and I walked around here today just to breathe in the, uh, his spirit. And uh, I was talking to some brothers out there, and they, they told me, um, I said, well, was he real quiet? And they said, no, he could talk of the storm. But, but for us, he was kind of quiet. And he wouldn't have wanted you guys, he wouldn't have put up with this. He would have said, 
No, just, just you know, say your goodbyes and that's it. He wouldn't have wanted every, everyone to cross over him because he was just required. He didn't want to ever put anyone out. If you ask him something, he goes, oh, whatever. He would say, oh, whatever. It's good. He taught me, uh, watching him the last few years, he taught me what, what it was to love God. And at my church, we have a, a men's breakfast every Friday, and it's called uh, Men's Devotion. And a man talked about the mustard seed. And uh, you know the story, how it grew to be a great, a great tree. And, and that's what Mike was with his faith. Um, I saw lots of, uh, lots of things in his testimony. His, uh, when my wife's brother died a few years ago, I called him and told him. And, and, and of course, just like you guys said, when he would always pray for our family, he, he, uh, he, uh, he stopped what he was doing. We were talking on the cell phone. I hope he wasn't driving. But, uh, we st he stopped and he prayed for my, my brother-in-law. Um, one more testimony story is he told me um, when, when he was told about this illness, he said, uh, well, Jeff, if God heals me, I'm going to use this for my testimony. And if he doesn't heal me, I know where I'm going. Mike, uh, one last thing, brother, and I'm through. Um, in, in Corinthians, it talks about love. And my brother had love. <clears throat> Corinthians 13, 3. It says three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And my brother had love. Um, I'm sorry, two more. I'll be quick. Um, so another thing that I've learned is in the African American uh, churches, they talk about homecoming, and that's what you got to go home. Um, this this today marks the going home of him to the Lord. I uh, I listened to a talk radio guy. Uh, he's out of Houston. And on Fridays, he does, he does a, um, he does a little, it's just a tradition that he does every Friday. And, and whether you partake or not, this can be a Coca-Cola. But today, I want to pop a top to my brother. So everyone, pick up your Coca-Cola can. Let's pop a top to Mike. Pop. pop. Thank you so much. We were going to do this at the end of the service, but now I'm going to start sorry. it. If anybody else in the family wants to come and share a word about Dale, let's go ahead and do that now, and then we'll uh, move on. Come on. My name is Cheryl, and he is my brother. Michael Del Brazil was the firstborn child of Martha and Rudy Brazil on July 10, 1951. His dad was stationed at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, with the U.S. Army. That makes him an official Army brat. <laughs> on his dad's side of the family, he was the first Brazil grandson, so he was definitely it. His dad sister is here today and can share wonderful memories of his childhood. She and Uncle Ray cherished their nephew their entire life. His mom's family, the Hargett clan, was also a huge part of his childhood. He had lots of aunts and uncles and cousins that loved him dearly. Mike had a deep sense of family his entire life. He stayed in touch. His family grew with siblings, Cheryl, Jeffrey, Joe, and Janet. All of our lives, we have been a family of five children. He was a fun big brother with a wonderful sense of humor and mischief. Mike graduated from Murphy High School here in Spokane in 1969. In his early 20s, 
He married and had a son, Michael Jason Brazil. It was the proudest day of his life. Jason is so lucky that in many ways, besides the beautiful red hair and kind nature that share. Mike was very smart and avid reader. He went to school for computers. He achieved his dream of going to truck driving school to drive trucks out in Dallas. He loved that job. <laughs> the most meaningful occupation Michael Dale had was found late in his life. He came here to the mission post 11 years ago for three months, say, and never left. My brother did what many of us are unable to do. He found his calling, his purpose in the universe. Amen. His work here mattered. I saw Mike in December as he and Jason joined us for Christmas dinner. He could barely walk. His health was bad. His own. He kept on working. I now mean, know what he realized, but Mike could never ask people for anything. He was a very private, independent man. One of his strongest characteristics was his deep and loving devotion to his mother. He is a very loved son, father, brother, uncle, and friend. I have spent my entire life bossing him around. He would just smile that sweet smile, and I would feel like the most important person in the world. To him, I really miss all his messages and crazy ringtones. Mike made me smile. I have to mention all his nephews and nieces that were his life. He was a great and deep uncle Buck. <laughs> Many of the young people have come from different parts of the country during his hospital day and our day. What a tribute to him. I celebrate his love in my heart, and I hope you will always remember and pass it on. My mother requests that all of you sign her guest book on the table for her so she can keep it. And thanks for wearing your hats today. Michael Dale always loved that hat, and he is glad.
his heart was much, much bigger than his vocabulary. He didn't spend a lot of time talking. Or if he did, it was more about jabbering stuff that really didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, through the years, you know, a lot of people come in and out of my life and I kind of don't, I didn't really realize until my mother called me. She said, go to the hospital. My uncle was in the hospital. And I really didn't know why. So I went up there by myself. Everybody was in the hospital. And I got to talk to him for about two and a half hours just being with him. It was very, it was, the first part of it was very excruciating because it was very scary. What was going on, and he felt bad because he hadn't told his mother or anyone in the family about just how bad he was feeling. I'd gone through some cancer stuff with a good friend of mine previously, so I kind of figured I could tell by looking at him how far along he was and how bad he was. Trying to keep every every one of the nurses that came through there, the man had something to say to him. <laughs> he could probably talk to him, he said something to him. And they were all rude. <laughs> he, he, he was hurting so bad and he was still making notes and stuff. He's, he's always been like that. Um, at Christmas time, I was blessed to have a big career. I made a lot of errors in my life. And um, got a new house. When he came to visit, he brought my heart. He didn't really know about it. It was past Christmas. And like I said, he was sick. He couldn't hardly move around. But he brought it across town. A little old rickety car so we could, could see it. Because that kind of guy puts one right Say my piece that first night, and I didn't know if it was going to make me sick or not. But I hope to see him again in another race. Especially for how goofy I am. <laughs> I love my dad. Always will. And thank you for being here. I love all of you. As I know my dad. Bring this woman a microphone.
that my daily gal really loved him. And he worked so hard driving the men to work. Missing, and I appreciate all of you to come. And I want you to come see me. I need somebody. She's not kidding. <laughs> She's not. I'm so lonesome. I appreciate my children coming from Texas to be here. I'm Thank you for my grandchildren, every one of them. They're here too. That was Stephen. And then there's Misty. Here is Haley. Cold and Haley, my great grandchildren. And I have two. Grandchildren that they don't live here, but they, they miss too. Anyway, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming today. That was sweet, Grandma. That was good, Grandma. Oh, here you go, Sydney. Most people here know me. There's a few that may not. My name is Sydney Party. She mentioned my name and my husband Steve's name. Many, many years ago, about 20 over years ago, something years ago, I met Steve. We were getting married. and He told me, he said, I have some very special friends that I met when I was out in Texas and some in Mobile and I just wanted to meet everybody. But there's a bunch of them. So first we went to Miss Holland's house and met her. And eventually I met Mike and the brothers and the sisters. And they just she asked me where where are you from and where are your parents from? One thing led to another. Come to find out we're related. <laughs> Their great 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 grandfather and my great great grandfather were brothers. So that makes us distant cousins. But to me now, he's not so distant. He's always there in our hearts. And he always will be. All of them. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Good job, Steve. And Mike was a very wonderful person. And a God bless him. Good. He said Mike was a wonderful person and we love him and we'll all miss him. Can we all stand and join in the comment dialogue? The words we really <laughs> Oh, my Savior, God, to me, how great 
filled with manna donuts. <laughs> so, and I am truly grateful that Dale has finally gotten his true football allegiance straightened out. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> He's rolling with the tide. <laughs> Praise God for that. Dale, uh, in my opinion, was a success. Now, here's why I say that. You know, God's people define success in a different way than the world does. That's right. It, it is a person a success based on the number of people that turn out at their funeral? No, that's the way the world defines success. Is success defined by how much money you have? In Psalms chapter 73, the psalmist is confused because he's living the godly life and there are a bunch of people around him living an ungodly life, but they have so many more material possessions than he has. And the psalmist comes to God and he says, God, I don't understand this. I am uh, I'm serving you. I'm doing your will. And, uh, and yet I have so little, materially speaking. And then he made this statement in verse 17. He said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. And the word sanctuary in that verse means the presence of God. He said, man, I was confused about this until I went into the presence of God and God straightened me out and some stuff. And God let me know that you're not a success based on how many people have a name or how many people know your name or how many people come to your sick bed when you're sick. No, you're defined as a success in the eyes of God if you're doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Regardless of how much money it involves or how, how much popularity it involves or you know your name. And in my opinion, Dale was just as much of a success as my mother was because God called my mother to raise three children and she spent her whole life raising those children. And I want you to know that those two success stories are meeting in heaven right now. Dale is meeting my mother and my mother is meeting Dale, hallelujah. And in the eyes of God, they were both successes here on earth and now they're successes in heaven. Amen. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you, Dale is where we all want to be. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, he beat us there, that scoundrel. It's just like him to do that, isn't it? I mean, uh, I, I don't spend much time on Facebook, but when Dale posts something, I would go look at it, and uh, there'd be a post from Dale, and it would be the silliest, stupidest thing you've ever heard of. I mean, it'd just be way out there, and I said, boy, that's Dale. Just like him, man. I wish I had time to go through some of those posts with you, but Revelation 22, 3 says, oh, man, I, I envy Dale in a way. Revelation chapter 22, verse 3 says this, and there shall be no more curse, talking about heaven. Now listen, we live in, in, in the world today, we live in the midst of blessed and curses. We're surrounded by cursing with people who are cursed, Things happen that we know are very obviously a curse from the wicked one. And, uh, and so the Christian life on earth is kind of a strange combination. And we see so many different things happening. And some of those things are curses and some are blessings. But I want you to know that when a man departs the body, and Dale left his body behind, but the real Dale went to heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I want you to know that Dale no longer has the curse of sickness on his life. He no longer has the curse of sorrow because Jesus has already wiped away every tear that he's ever shed and compensated for every bad thing that ever happened to Dale. Hallelujah. His first five minutes, seconds in heaven, he was compensated for everything bad that ever happened to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there shall be no curse there. There's no curse where Dale is. Man, I'm so sick and tired of turning on the news. I just about have to turn it off. I say, God, how much more of this are you going to tolerate? And I'm going to tell you, man, Dale's in the place we all long to be. Come on. And up there, the only news is Jesus. <laughs> and that's never bad news. And the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. <clears throat> now 
not only is Dale living a holy life in heaven because there's no curse there, but he has a totally surrendered heart to Jesus Christ. And I envy him for that. You know, we all struggle. One day we're surrendered, next day we're not. Can anybody identify? I mean, you know, we think, boy, I could have done that better. We go home and lay down and go to sleep and say, I shouldn't have said that. Come on, don't sit out there and look at me like that don't happen to you. <laughs> It happens to all of us. That's right. Come on with us. But I want you to know that Dale's heart right now is totally and completely surrendered to the throne of God and of the Lamb. And because of that, he is perfectly serving Jesus. Amen. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God shall be in it. And the, of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servant shall serve him. Now, Dale served in one way while he was here. He served behind the wheel of a vehicle. And he served walking around this campus with his awesome presence and, uh, and, and, and having fun. And, but he's serving the Lord Jesus Christ in a perfect way right now. And I want you to know I envy him for that. That's my goal in life is to serve Jesus. And so his servant shall serve him. And Dale is exercising perfect service to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't have you anymore. Dale is beholding the face of Jesus Christ unhindered. I envy him for that. Sometimes we struggle and we try to see. We want to see Jesus and we try and we pray and we want to sense the presence of Jesus and sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes we get so sick and so tired of the inconsistency we say, Lord, just take us on home. Where there is no inconsistency. But, the, but only, and so Dale is beholding the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. We see through a glass darkly right now. God reveals to us by revelation the things that we need to see, but Dale is seeing them with his eyes. And he's seeing, he's seeing 2020, the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the name of Jesus shall be in their foreheads, verse 4 says. The eyes of Dale are beholding our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in perfection, unhindered by this human body, the frailty of our human body. And the difficulties that we struggle with on a daily basis. All those things are behind Dale now. Dale is exhibiting perfect Christ-like actions and attitudes. And his name shall be in their foreheads. So he is perfectly identified with Christ. But listen to this. And there shall be no night there. I have sundown syndrome. I've had it since I was, can remember. It's an actual psychological condition. Everybody's thinking, I thought there's something wrong with that guy. <laughs> it's called sundown. When the sun goes down, you just, you want to be in a familiar environment. You want to go home like a chicken roosting, you know. When the sun goes down, I want, I want to go home. I don't want to drive at night. I don't want to go out at night. I don't want to get out there in the darkness. I want to be around things I'm familiar with. It's called sundown syndrome. But I want you to know, our brother Dale has experienced the last sunset that he'll ever experience because he is in the presence of the living God where there is no darkness at all. And in the Bible, darkness represents evil and danger. But Dale is now finally, after all these years, out of danger and he's, when he's in a place where nobody can ever hurt him again. Nobody can ever touch him again. Uh, nothing can ever discourage him again. Hallelujah. I envy Michael Dale Brazil. I want to be where he is. And the Lord God is the light of heaven. Verse 5 says. But listen to this. Not only all those things, but listen to this. Dale is living in perfect victory. <laughs> oh, I envy him, don't you? 
Sometimes we have victory over the devil, and those victories are great, and God gets glorified. And then other times it seems like we just get slapped down, knocked down on our back, and we can't, uh, we just can't seem to put one foot in front of the other. But all those days are over for Dale. And the last part of verse 5 says, and they shall reign. It's not talking about just Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit in heaven reigning. And they shall reign. Talk about the people in heaven. Dale is reigning over sin, sorrow, sickness, and all those things. And he'll reign over those things forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. And there is no germ that will ever attach itself to his body again. Praise God. Many of us saw him deteriorate very rapidly. And we said, oh God, it can't be. And he just went down so fast. And it was just almost the, the life of the Bishop of Hope is so fast paced that, man, the days go by like that. And it just seemed like Dale was here one day and gone the next. But he's not really gone. In the book of Job, <laughs> Job lost everything he had, including his ten children. But the Bible says that God restored everything that was taken from Job. And you can read about the material possessions being double. God gave him double what he lost. But then God only gave him ten children. Now wait a minute. He lost ten children and God gave him back ten children. Somebody said, wait a minute. That's not double. Oh yes it is. Because his ten children were in heaven. And Job had ten children in heaven and ten on earth. Hallelujah. So God did double what he lost. And so we haven't lost Dale. See, if you know where something is, it ain't lost, right? Amen. We haven't lost, Dale. <laughs> and I hate to, I kind of hate to say this, man, but you know, he wouldn't come back if he had a chance to. And he's, he's doing that roll tide jig in heaven right now. I can see him doing it. I like it. So he's pretty big. Man, I envy this guy. I envy him. Now, I'm not about to step out in front of the semi truck. You understand that? I'm making suicidal statements here, but I'm going to tell you, I am so grateful the Bible teaches that there is a heaven and a way to get there, aren't you? That's right. Amen. And Miss Martha said something about smoking. Yeah, Mission of Hope Ministries is zero tolerance for smoking. But somebody said one time, yeah, if you don't get your heart right with God, you're going to be smoking one day. Come on. <laughs> Praise God. I'm so grateful that we can stand up here today and have a life and know that he is where the Bible says that a person goes when they repent of their sins, place their faith in Christ, and surrender to him as well. Now I want you to know the same amazing grace that saved Dale and enabled him to get where he is is the same grace that we can avail ourselves of today. And it really is amazing. When you look around at people and 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 see, uh, man, God saves all kinds of people, and even a double-minded man who wears an Auburn hat and an Alabama shirt. And I told him, Dale, don't you dare wear that to the Iron Bowl. You'll get beat up by both sides. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to close with amazing grace, and it really is amazing. And listen, if you have experienced that amazing grace, you can sing about it. From the heart, <laughs> Dale's going to be singing along with us. Because he is in heaven singing about the amazing grace of God. Right. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this precious family. God, I pray that you would fill the void that's been left by the the decease of Dale with the presence and power of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. God, I pray that you put your arms of love around this family. Bless them. I pray for Miss Martha, God. Father, would you be near and dear to her? Would you be real to her in these days, Father? Would you visit her with your power, your strength, your grace, your comfort, God? And Lord, we thank you. We're reminded today that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because you are with us. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And so we pray today, Father, that you be a present help to this family. And we thank you for allowing us today to celebrate the life, the death, 
and now the victory of Michael Dale Brazil. And we just ask you to uh, take this family in your hands, God, and draw them close together amen. and close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, would you stand with me, please? And uh, Jamie and Will are going to come and lead us in amazing grace, and then we'll be dismissed. <laughs>